Grown Ass Woman's Guide is usually much of the audience is, I would say, Gen X, definitely over 40. And that's that's my favorite generation, by the way. Is it really? Why? Yeah. In my communities, that's the nicest group of people for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I love and the that. ones that I tend to relate to more. So on occasion, I meet someone who's under 40 that I'm like, oh, my God, I have to talk to this person. And so that person <laughs> is you. So thank you. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> no pressure. Anna Prisbilski is a video and content creator who brings realness, humor, and a bit of quirk to the personal development topics she shares on Instagram and TikTok. Anna's not so serious tone and approach allow us all to laugh a little at the pressures we all feel. I first discovered Anna when a friend shared a link to this gem. A brand new day. Let's grab it by the butt. Get all that other stuff. Drink a bunch of iced coffee, rock it to the moon, and rock and fucking roll. Thank you. It's called manifesting. Fuck it up. In this episode, Anna and I talk mental health and wellness, the difference in perspective when it comes to Gen X and millennials. It's kind of fascinating. And how we can begin to shed ourselves of judgment, expectations, and start to heal from some of the programming we have all experienced in our lives. I'm Jackie McDougall, and this is the Grown Ass Woman's Guide. After a day of go, 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 balance and work and three teenagers trying to juggle the unexpected things that pop up daily, I sometimes have a hard time settling down and prioritizing my inner calm. You know what I'm talking about. But recently, I discovered Element Apothic. Their CBD products for achieving a restful night's sleep and stress-free days. Oh, I got to be honest with you. I had heard about the benefits of CBD, but like many women, I had no real idea of what CBD could actually do. Element Apothic CBD-infused wellness and body care products combine the healing power of nature with the ingenuity of science. And they are transparent down to every ingredient so you know exactly what's in there. Give yourself or someone you love the gift of wellness today. Visit elementapothic.com forward slash GA woman and save 10% with promo code GA woman. Anna's hilarious wit in tackling things like mental health stigmas, body acceptance, ADHD, and depression, to name a few, helps make these important, sometimes taboo topics more easily approachable and digestible. You haven't been doing this that long. No, nope. It's pretty new. Um, I've been on TikTok a lot longer, Mm. um, but uh, I am new to the Instagram game. (laughs) Um, Probably only like not even a year, probably I've been posting regularly. So it's been a wild ride. Because I, I looked back and you were doing, you know, the the husband posts and the dog posts and the mm-hmm. I just colored my hair posts and all those great things that we all love and do. Where did you discover, like, was there a light bulb moment that you're like, oh, people like this stuff? Or were you just doing things? How did it happen? I actually feel like I'm lucky because I started on TikTok where I got to, like, feel it out because, you know, before I went to Instagram and it feels like everything happened fast on Instagram because it kind of did. But I had a year of TikTok under my belt of like, what works? Who wants to hear from me? So I already had a voice when I came over, which was very helpful. Mm -hmm. But the first time I ever realized that what I was doing was some sort of a need was Thanksgiving of 2020. And I did a post because it was we didn't go to Thanksgiving, um, Mm -hmm. you know, right in the thick of the pandemic. And uh, I made a post about how nice it was to be home on Thanksgiving because nobody makes you cry at home. How do we tell them we're never coming back to Thanksgiving? Because it's so fun at home alone where nobody makes you cry. And that was it. Like it took off. And I was like, oh, people just want to know. People just want to hear like that everybody else is having the same hard times they're having. That is so relatable. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, and that was the one where everyone's like, oh my gosh, I feel the same way. And you're like, yep, we all are happy to be home this Thanksgiving. You know, those of us who have a complicated relationship with our family or whatever. But so from there, I just, it was that. I just started sharing me. Like, here's what's going on. Here's how I'm feeling. Like, work is overwhelming. 
being alive is overwhelming. Every day is overwhelming. And it just sort of went from there. But yeah, I was never like a content creator or any of thing of the sort, but I am an event planner and we essentially had a year and a half off of work because we could not put on events for a thousand people. Let, you know, they said we could let events for like 25 people and we tried those and you're like, we cannot survive on 25 people. So yeah, I was home bored. (laughs) I was consuming so much content online and I was like, I'm going to try and I loved it. So I, I feel really lucky that it fell into my lap. I, I mean, I could have never made a video and, you know, I'd just be doing my job every day. Right. And I wouldn't know that any of this exists. Right. You know, you say fell into my lap, but I think the key to point out here is that you tried stuff because there yeah. are so many people who have ideas like you who sit back and think about those ideas and think and plan and you just you just did it. Uh, that's not true. I watched eight months of TikTok <laughs> before I posted a video. Okay. Because I got on before the pandemic. I got on, you know, in 2019 and I was watching and I was watching and I was watching. And then finally, eight months later, I posted a video and I was so mad at myself. Like, why did you wait eight months? Like you missed eight months of prime posting opportunities. And I did a lot of like encouraging in the beginning where I was like, if you're not posting, why? I just was trying to get people to post because... It was so cathartic to Mm. have an outlet. You know, if you don't really have a creative outlet as an adult, which I didn't, besides my career, which doesn't count. (laughs) (laughs) So it was just so nice. It was like I finally had somewhere to put that chaotic energy and that frustrated energy and talk about the hard stuff and somewhere to do it and people to talk about it with. Yeah. Do you think there's a fine line somewhere between being quote unquote authentic online, sharing your story, sharing your your fears and all of that. And then like just going over the edge. Definitely. I always say I share so much of like my brain and my heart, but I don't share very much of my life, you know? So I share those emotions, but I don't necessarily ever share what, the, what I'm specifically talking about. Right. So I, I try to hold a little for me. Yeah, there's like a line where you're still getting your point across, but you're not revealing every piece of information that's ever happened to you in your whole life. Right, right. And and telling other people's stories. I mean, I think that's what a lot of people yeah. end up sort of crossing the line of telling other people's stories and you never do that. No, I'm pretty, not to say vague because it's very specific, but it mm-hmm. is, you know, I say in general, you know, like, is there that thing that you really want to do and you're scared to do? You know, I don't say like, the thing I'm scared to do. <laughs> right. Which is. But, uh, you know, it's it's what I'm doing, really. Uh, all of this has been terrifying. You know, yeah. I try to be honest about that, too, when people are like, is it fun? And I'm like, yes, but I'm scared <laughs> every yeah. day. I never know what's going to happen. You don't know, like, what kind of feedback you're going to get. You don't know what's going to happen day to day. The whole thing could fall apart tomorrow, and that's so scary. Mm. Well, let's talk about that feedback a little bit. So who who would you say, number one, is your audience? Like who shows up for you again and again? <laughs> well, my, if you look at my analytics, it's 95 to 97% women across mm-hmm. both platforms. And everybody's pretty much over 30. I feel really lucky. I kind of found this community of people who have lived a little. Mm-hmm. As much as I want, you know, the things I'm saying to get to a younger generation, I also know that I wouldn't have been ready to hear it. Mm. at 20, 22, you know, and now I am. And so I think the audience that it's going to and the people that I'm interacting with and the community that's always there for me in my comments, you know, it's kind of the same consistent group of women, same age, mental health struggles, just kind of relating to each other. Yeah. I mean, one of the reasons I even started anything for women over 40 was because I'm from a generation where we didn't talk about mental health. Like some of the stuff that is discussed every day is like, that was a weakness, right? You didn't, you just kind of shoved it down. And so now I'm 51. I have women around me who are in their 40s, 50s, 60s. And we're talking about this stuff openly. And I think partly we're encouraged by people like you because Mm -hmm. you're younger and you're figuring it out earlier. And I think partly there's some envy there. 
And it's like, how did you figure it out so young? Right. Do you yes. get any of that? Um, well, in my own life, I mean, I'm dealing with this, obviously, with my parents. I still get that argument all the time. Like, well, we dealt with it, so you should. And I'm like, things being bad for one group of people is not a reason for it to be bad for another group of people. That's a, that's a bad take. And so that's like a daily battle. Like, it was bad for you, so it should be bad for me is like such a... We got we to gotta get rid of that. But um, yeah. yeah, I do come from a, I always say my, my parents were the king and queen to keep it to yourself. Mm. Um, and so you come from that environment and then you turn yes. into me. <laughs> that is definitely, you know, I, I put it out there. I'm saying, I'm saying it. So yeah. What do they yeah. think of that? Uh, you know, they're proud of me <laughs> for following my dreams. Um, <laughs> they're like pulling think, out the script. We th- we admire you for yeah yeah <laughs> no they're good they're uh they're getting better you know but it is it's like you said it's it's just a, an entire generation and they came from another entire generation of yeah you don't talk about it you know things are hard for everybody so don't talk about it it's like well no why don't we find the root of this problem like why is everything hard for everybody where did we go wrong what systems are failing us and it's so many of them that you know we need to maybe address. <laughs> How about addressing it instead of just saying that's just the way it is? Right. How many lives could have been saved in the last 30 years if people had felt comfortable being who they are and saying what they want to say and saying, I just don't feel good about this. You know, I'm not happy, but I think we're getting closer. Um, I also think I might be a little bit sheltered because my community is so niched around me. But that's still a lot of people. That's still a lot of people who are having the conversations that I want to have. Right. And many of us weren't having any of these conversations growing up. Do you feel like Gen Xers specifically are? I find a lot of Gen Xers are trying to be cycle breakers Mm. in my communities. So that's true, too. Like, it's tough because I'm only seeing the Gen Xers that, you know, are in my specific community. But the ones that, you know, are following me and and do find what I have to say of value are people who are trying to break the cycle in in their lives. Yeah. And not that you're a doctor. And so, you know, this is an opinion. (laughs) This is an opinion question. How how do you see Gen Xers or even yourself breaking the cycle? What what do you think are the most important things? Destigmatizing mental health, which is so cool and so huge. I just think of how helpful like therapy could have been to me in middle elementary school. You know, I obviously I didn't get diagnosed with ADHD until I was 33. Um, You know, that's tough. You're like, Mm -hmm. oh, here are all these things that if somebody had been like, oh, do you want to talk about how your you know mind is feeling? How's your heart feeling? Where's your brain at? Not just like you're going to go to school and you're going to learn and that's that. And like you play with friends and these are the list of the things you do. And here's the progression of your life. Like you do school and then you go to college and then you get a job. And okay, well, when do I take care of me? Like, what's my, there wasn't really any of that. And I think that's what people are introducing into their, and we'll probably mess it up too. (laughs) We're, We're probably going too far in one direction. I don't know. But as far as breaking the cycle, it's talking about mental health, that it exists, you know, that some of us just aren't okay. Like, We are struggling and that doesn't always have to do with your financial status or your career status or, you know, everything can be perfectly great in your life. And that doesn't mean that your brain is keeping up, you know, it's not maybe recognizing that you're safe and happy and healthy because that's just not the way it works all the time. Right. And so, yeah, those conversations I think are just so important. And I think we're changing the conversation around self-worth that's one I keep seeing I've been Mm. seeing it a lot and um you know I never heard any of that before like the you're inherently worthy of love and you're you you have value no matter what you're doing um you know it's not tied to I love that one that you did where it's not tied to like what you accomplish right yeah and and productivity that's one of the greatest struggles of Gen X I think is that yeah. we are tied to that. And I, I actually have an episode on it, on being enough. And I, and I told my son, I have three teenage boys, and I told my oh youngest my this story where I was like, if you went to a nursery, brand new, 10 babies in the hospital, and they're all lying there, you know, being babies. <laughs> and I said, 
what if you went to the hospital and you saw these 10 babies and you had to pick out one or two or three of them that were the unworthy ones, the ones that who, who weren't good enough. And my son was looking at me like, you're crazy. And I said, Ex- we're born good enough. Like this is, yeah. this is the example. We're born good enough. It's That's the such noise. a good example. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the noise that gets in the way, right? That we stop re- remembering that we're good enough or we never learned that we're good enough. It's true. And I watch it. I don't know. I, I Sometimes I just think I got lucky where I didn't get trapped in these ruts. But I watch my friends and family trying to find uh, life partners when I have my friends in their 20s and 30s and having these insane standards and not, you know, thinking about somebody's heart or they're like, well, what's his job? Does he have a car? What's, you know, where does he live? And I'm just nice. like, oh my gosh, how did we get stuck on that? Like when we greet people, we say, meet a new person. We say, what do you do? You know, and right. it's like, what? <laughs> and then, you know, we're assessing their value because that's the way yeah. we've always done it. You're like, oh, you're a, it's like, no, it's a person. You should, you know, what makes you happy? Do you have any cool hobbies? <laughs> like, right. Uh, uh, you know, Is what do you Is there something enjoy? that you feel passionate about or, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's such a good point. And spoiler alert, the guy with the car and the job and all of that, we have no idea what's going to happen anymore. So that could yeah. be gone in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, we learned that too. Now I'm right? like, especially like, drop it all. Like everybody's worth the same amount. Just see if you like them. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah, such a good point. I mean, I've been married 20 years this year, and I'll tell you right now, it's all about does that person have your back when yeah. push comes to shove and, you know, the shit hits the fan? Does that person value you enough that yeah. they're willing to partner with you through whatever it is? So, are you still laughing when the money's gone? Because yeah. that is important. Yeah, last year, essentially, we both lost our job, or 2020, which mm-hmm. is now so two years ago. Right. Well, uh, 2000 you know, we was both five years ago, so I, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, so we both, you know, essentially lost our jobs, and you're like, oh, okay, we're we can make this work, I guess. Like, we'll figure it out. That was one of those moments. You're like, glad I just picked someone I like being around who is a yeah. resourceful person who makes me feel comfortable in my own skin because you know, otherwise, we might be in a jam. Right, right. So, speaking of your marriage, uh, I uh-huh. was reading. Do you live in different states? We do. Yeah. Um, that's another <laughs> that thing. That might I, be a good secret to the marriage, <laughs> to a happy yeah, couple. <laughs> uh, that too. I mean, we were, we were together uh, like four or five months of the of 2020. So he mm-hmm. was home for a while. But um, yeah, he works in New Jersey. I work in Michigan. He was very miserable at his job here in Michigan. And I said, quit. We've never not made it work. Like, get your job and we'll see what happens. And then he was home for a little while and then he got some temporary work in New Jersey. He was going to be there for two weeks, make, you know, so much money and then come back. Right. Uh, And then he just stayed. I mean, he didn't stay. He came back and got his things, but he's just been there ever since. So we go back and forth and it was hard at first for, not because it was hard. It was hard at first because it's different Mm -hmm. and change is hard to wrap your mind around but we got used to it and now it's kind of nice to have that time where I just get to be me and then that time where we get to be us I feel like I really like having that me time and that me space especially now that I'm online and I don't want to not be present when he's around so right I'll go really hard for two weeks creating content writing content so that when he's home, you know, I can lay back a little bit. Um, yeah, it's definitely, maybe that is the secret. <laughs> <laughs> I've been reading a lot about older couples who either get together with someone new and they live separately forever, mm-hmm. you know, or or other couples who've just decided to stay together but live separately. And a lot of people like it. And, you know, my husband started working from home in March of 2020. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And he's still here, and we share an office and a bedroom. So, it's, oh my gosh, I can understand having your space. It's a great thing. Yeah. So, how has your life changed? Obviously, that has changed your life. But how has your life changed since you became this online sensation? <laughs> so I would say. Um, it hasn't. You know, if you come to my house, like nothing's changed. You know, nothing's changed. We do the same activities we've always done. Um, we go on the same 
weird trips we go on to Kentucky and wherever. It's, it's only truly changed online, which I think is so interesting. I think I'm at, in that sweet spot right now where like nobody really knows who I am, mm-hmm. but enough people online know who I am that I stay very busy podcasting and creating content and interacting with people. Mostly I'm just busier because <laughs> mm. now I have two full-time jobs. Yeah. And I can imagine that's got to be a lot. Do you see your life kind of turning into just this at some point? Is that the goal? Or are you happy with having the two jobs? Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, I would love to do this. I have learned so much. I find the whole experience to be so eye-opening. My mm. entire mindset about myself has changed through talking about it online. And I, I just think that's so cool. I think it's cool that there's a need for it. Even, you know, I get messages that just like break my heart. People like you've changed my life. And you're like, how I'm I'm just talking, but (laughs) it's happening. So we'll see. Mm, 2023. (laughs) (laughs) How has your mindset changed? You mentioned that changing. I always thought my life would go one way. And I never even allowed the possibility that my life would go a different way. I went to college. I went to work. I've been at the same company for 10 and a half years. I'm going to work here till I die. This is the plan. We have the house. We bought the house that we want to live in till we die. We had all this like, this is it. We're set. We're set. We're set. And I was lying to myself because I always was like, I don't feel trapped. This is what I want. And then the more and more that I branched out, I did feel trapped. Like, oh, I really want to do this. And I really want to do this on a bigger scale. And I want to do this more. And I want to talk to more people. And then the shift in my mindset has basically just been like, open the door. You don't have to walk out it, but open it. Leave it open. And I feel like even just putting the possibility of a change in the fire so much of that anxiety just like flew out that door and so mm. much of that fear flew out that door. I'm not s- as scared as I was, you know, I was just so scared of not doing what I was supposed to do or what I thought I was supposed to do and not having that constant fear of disappointing everybody all of the time is mm. like such a weight lifted off my chest. People ask me the other day, like, how has your life changed? You keep talking about how much your life has changed. And I say, it's not that my life has changed. It's that my mindset has changed. And that makes everything different. You have changed. Yeah, I have changed so much. None of it feels as scary or as impossible or like I'm trapped anymore. In the American dream, you know, that is actually a nightmare. I got the keys to the lock and I can walk out if I want. And I never thought that was possible. I never even imagined that. Yeah. I think we automatically expect that a young person is going to want the American dream. And your life is not meant to be lived for someone else. Yes. And we're finally talking about that. Putting yourself first is not selfish. Our needs matter. We are worth our own love and affection. Don't lose sight of it, bestie. Keep it up, cutie. I'm proud of you. Yes, you come first and your needs matter are two things I've never heard before, yep. like ever. And now every single day, I'm like, you come first. <laughs> like, everything else matters, but not as much as I do. Right. My mental health matters. The way I'm feeling that day matters. It all matters. And not burning myself out matters. And not letting everybody walk all over me and not dropping everything to take care of everybody else all the time. Like, what? <laughs> right. And you talked about the people being disappointed. Like what actually happens if somebody is disappointed or feeling judgment toward what you're doing? Yeah, it's like that has nothing to do with me. Nothing. If you right. feel a way about my life, like that's very strange. But now I see that. But before I would have dropped everything to change my life back so that nobody would think any certain way about it. Right. Exhausting. It's exhausting living your life for other people. Especially, I think it's more the fear that they might be disappointed than the actual disappointment. 
Because yeah, I think they might not even care. (laughs) Right, right. Because when someone's disappointed, you're like, oh, okay, I understand the feeling and that's yours. But that fear of they might feel a certain way seems to be greater than the actual feelings. The fear of the unknown. Yeah. Yeah. It's a tough one to push out of your mind. So what if they aren't happy? That's the way the world works. Right. Also, put yourself in their shoes. I'm like, would I be mad if somebody else was living my life and wanted to do this? No. (laughs) Right. So (laughs) if they were frustrated or angry or disappointed in me, that doesn't really have anything to do with me. Yeah. And I think on the flip side, what you're doing is important for parents to to not try to pass that legacy of trying to please everyone onto your kids. So like, the four-year college. And I'm going through it now where if you yeah. asked me when my kid was in kindergarten, I'm like, he's going to a four-year school. He's blah, 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 blah. And now I'm like, oh, I don't, that's not necessarily your path. And yeah, I'd love to help you figure out your path, but it's not my path. Yeah. My husband lives with my aunt and uncle in New Jersey. And so he lives with my cousins. One's mm. a freshman in college and one is a senior in high school. And I felt really lucky that I got to be a part of the, not the decision-making process, but the, everybody was hounding down on her, you know, like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I was like, oh man, you know that none of this matters, right? And she was like, it doesn't. And I was like, no, you just got to, you got to do what you want to do and you'll figure it out. And I said, and if you pick one thing and you don't like it, you can change your mind. Nobody told me those things. And it's just like, oh, knowing that you're not trapped is I think it's like the number one thing I wish I had known my whole life. Like you aren't stuck. You are never trapped. This is not something you have to do. None of this. And I just learned that like last year. (laughs) So now I'm trying to tell everybody else like, hey, you don't have to. You don't have to. Right. What you've decided is good for you at one period of time is not necessarily the thing that you have to stick to. We talk about quitting, right? Don't quit. And sometimes quit. (laughs) Yeah. It, yes. I, that's a lot happening more now. I even see with my friends, you know, like encouraging each other to leave their jobs. And you're like, yes, <laughs> right? and do what makes you happy. And I've seen it. And I've seen friends leave like a toxic work environment and get a job, another great job where they have unlimited pay time off and they're happy. And, you know, their employers understand that like sometimes they can't be there and mental health is a struggle. And you're just like, those things exist. So yeah, why wouldn't you walk away from a situation that is making you miserable. My generation was not taught that. That's for sure. Yeah, I I know. We were raised where it was like, figure out what you want to do for the rest of your life. Yes, You know, you you better know know. that at 18. (laughs) I, I think now we have learned and we're raising humans or millennials and beyond. Who's behind millennials? Gen Z. Gen Z. You, you're all learning much younger that it's all a bunch of bullshit. Yes. The whole thing is made up. I'm it's like not every real. day I'm like, it's made up. None of this matters. Like everything is made up. Some, some guy just decided one day that's how it was going to be. Like it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. My oldest said to me one time, so wait, you want me to go to college and get into debt to go somewhere that I don't even want to go to begin with? Yeah. And I yeah, was like, to work for the rest of my life. I'm like, to oh pay my off God. this. I was perpetuating. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was raised in, too. And I didn't even have a say in uh, what I went to school for. You know, you're like, oh my gosh. Wait, you didn't have a choice? No, I had a choice, but it was like I wanted to be a teacher. And my dad said, no. Like, I could have still done it. I was an adult, but you listen to your parents. That's what you do. And yeah. then he said, you can't be a teacher. You won't like it. And I was like, okay, what should I do? And he's like, you should be a business major. And I was like, okay, well, now that I've failed macro, er, what it? I could not pass accounting. And mm. I was like, so now what? <laughs> <laughs> I have taken it three times. It's not wow. for me. And then I wanted to leave college because I was happy with where I was in hospitality. And that wasn't an option either. I mean, it was, mm. but it was Didn't not. feel like one. Yeah, Yeah. it didn't feel like an option. Um, I wasted all that time and money and I didn't use the degree and I never felt like I had a choice. And what a bummer. I wish I felt like I had a choice. I would have loved, I loved working then. Now I'm less inclined, but I liked working so much. You know, I was skipping classes to go to work. I was like, I would much rather be here making money than sitting in school. It just seems silly. 
and school is there for those who want to go back to it. So yeah, if, you, totally. if you need to take a few <laughs> years to figure your stuff out. So, so May being mental health month, one of the things that I think we should focus on a little bit this month too is mental wellness and not just mental health. We talk about mental health, like anxiety and depression and all of these things that need to be treated and addressed. But how do you think, can we address mental wellness? I always harp on the basics when I'm like, your brain is not going to function the way that you want it. If you are not sleeping, eating and drinking water, I hate that that works. The (laughs) basics, it's so frustrating, but The reality is you cannot function. Your brain cannot function. Your brain cannot take care of you if you don't take care of it. And it's always the first to go for me when I'm super stressed. You're like, I'm skipping breakfast because I'm busy. I'm going to stay up till four in the morning to finish this proposal. And it's the wrong thing to do. It's that same like productivity. You're like, I got to do more. I got to do more. It's like, nope, you got to do less to do more. Your brain just needs, it needs time. It needs to be nurtured. You need to fuel it and you need to have time to yourself and not be going 24 hours a day are you busy or are you happy when you slow down to actually think about it, it's like okay if you're slowing down and feeling stressed <laughs> that probably means you need to slow down exactly there's no badge of honor for being busy no there's no prize it's frustrating that's true because <laughs> yeah i always want to be the best but yeah you <laughs> You cannot be the best overachiever. You need to be the best at taking care of your basic needs. I love that you talked about one time that rest isn't a reward. Rest (laughs) isn't a reward for not resting. Yeah, it's like food and water. You have to do it or you'll end up burnt out like an entire generation or three generations of people did. That pandemic, I say for me and I think for everybody, it was like, You'd lived your whole life going 155 miles an hour and then somebody put up a brick wall and we all just ran into it. Yeah. And you're like, whoa, what happened? <laughs> you know, it felt like a, a train wreck of the brain. Mm. And I think we realized that we were running that f- quickly for no reason, really. For no reason. Like, what were we getting out of it? Nothing. Not, well, yeah. maybe something, but I mean, there's a lot easier ways to go through life than rushing through everything. Right. So if you had one message of all the things, if somebody pressed play for some strange reason at the end of the episode, that would be weird. But <laughs> if they did, what do you want them to know? Your self-worth has nothing to do with your productivity. The messaging that was pounded into our brain since the day that we were born that our productivity is our value is garbage. Our self-worth should have absolutely nothing to do with how much we can complete in a day. That's one of those things I have to tell myself 15 times a day when I'm getting frustrated because I'm not getting enough done or I'm frustrated because I missed a deadline and I'm taking that out on me, which is very unhelpful. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the hardest thing to unlearn because I've been saying it once a day for a year now and I still don't quite believe it. So I know it's true. (laughs) My self-worth has nothing to do with my productivity. It's definitely something that needs to be reminded. (laughs) (laughs) If you've checked out Anna's recent TikTok, she's partnered with Dove for the Detox Your Feed Challenge. Dove's self-esteem project found that one in two girls say toxic beauty advice on social media causes low self-esteem, which is why I'm joining the Detox Your Feed Challenge. You can say a lot of things about the generations that follow ours, But one of the things I appreciate is their desire to look at the way we've been living as a society and break the cycle of shoulds and all of the other stories many of us over 40 have been telling ourselves and living by. It's refreshing and it's hopeful to see future generations or the younger generations start to take back and and get rid of all of the BS stories that we've been fed. So for the women like myself who are in our 50s, trying to deprogram ourselves only to reprogram. It's nice to see you doing this. Yes. Oh my gosh. And just keep in mind that unlearning is 10 times harder than learning. So got to give yourself a lot of grace. Yeah. And do you give yourself (laughs) the same grace that you tell everyone else to give themselves? I try. (laughs) (laughs) I sure try. I will link to all things Anna in the show notes at grownasswoman.guide forward slash episode 162. 
Remember, every episode of the Grown Ass Woman's Guide also includes a companion video and a blog post. So visit grownasswoman.guide for every episode. And be sure to hit that favorite or follow button on your favorite podcast app and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more mental health related episodes throughout the month of May. And to get every single one of the Grown Ass Woman's Guide episodes. Thank you so much for listening. If you like this episode, please share it with a friend. And until next time, you are a grown ass woman. Act accordingly. Keep it up, cutie. I'm proud of you. Spring has sprung. And with the change of seasons, sometimes comes an increase in vitality. If you're feeling in the mood for a little more personal time, may I suggest Coconut. Coconut is all about providing clean and natural ingredients when you're enjoying your most intimate moments with or without a partner. Naturally safe products developed by people who are obsessed with quality. Get 15% off with promo code GROWNASS at grownasswoman.guide forward slash coconut. That's 15% off with promo code GROWNASS at grownasswoman.guide forward slash coconut.